What's good guys, I'm Nakia Monet and I am here on the green carpet of Hulu's brand new true crime series Under the Bridge. We have tons of interviews with you and we talked to the artists who took part in bringing Raina's story to life. Make sure you guys check it out. Congratulations on the series and the role um, of Cam. I admire Cam so much and I admire the story arc of Cam, but something that I admire the most is the history of, like when we find out Cam's story arc, the history of indigenous people and indigenous families in Canada. Can you speak a little bit to that? Yeah, it's called the 60s scoop, you know, without trying to give too much away and also acknowledging that while we don't have a word for this epidemic that was government funded and government pushed um, in we very much had the equivalent and have the equivalent in the United States. That's why we have the Indian Child Welfare Act in place that was established in 1978. So, yeah, um, follow the story, follow Cam's arc, learn about the 60s scoop. Um, I was very blessed to get to spend a lot of my off time with a family who's uh, the patriarch was a survivor of the 60s scoop, who made a beautiful full circle return to his home, to his family. and. Uh, but yeah, it's um, that's that's the best case scenario. Yes. Uh, first of all, congratulations on this story and the character. Are you taking on the role of Rebecca, someone who is a real person and someone who wrote the book? Is that something where it was a challenge for you? And if so, what was the challenge on taking on her role? Um, it was a challenge, certainly, because sadly she had passed before we were we started shooting. Yeah. But I, I had known that she knew that I was cast and that she had wanted me to play her, so there was a little bit of liberation there, and um, she trusted me for whatever to play her, and I think that that uh, the trust from her, I don't know, I, I didn't feel that stressed about it, actually. Um, yeah. Well, you did such a fantabulous job as bringing the, the life of Rebecca on roll and, and her words on screen, especially the empathy, especially the empathy for the kids. So is that something where you looked at that as well and was like, okay, this is someone I can probably relate to, especially with kids in such a real life story? Yeah, I think that was um, definitely something that was really um, appealing to me about the character um, in such a horrific, tragic event. Um, being able to humanize individuals was uh, a quality that I really admired in her. Congratulations. Congrats on the story, the role. <laughs> this is a lot. <laughs> uh, so for you taking on this role, because you're playing a real life person, um, was there any hesitation for you taking on the role? For me, I've done a lot of darker stuff in the past. So, you know, it was something I felt comfortable with out the gate. And, you know, I'm super into the dark drama. So I was like, you know, this is a role I'm going to have to tackle, one that I'm going to have to research, but it's going to be able to show my acting chops more than a lot of my other roles, and I feel like I did just that. So, yeah. you know. You did a fantastic, when I tell you, a fantabulous job, because if you know the real story of, like, Warren, and you, you did such a fabulous job with the empathy coming across the screen, where though these kids did something bad, you feel, especially for your character, the feelings that you conveyed. So for you, what was that process like, tapping into the character of Warren? Yeah, that was that was a tough process for me, but a lot of it was just research on research on research. Um, I feel like Rebecca Godfrey's book did such a great job telling Warren's story, you know, and, and, and the relationship between him and um, Rebecca. So, you know, um, being able to portray that made it a little easier with, you know, even through the book. So, Working on this, do you have, because though this is a dark story and a true story, do you have any favorite moments working on this piece? Because I can only imagine the chemistry before, between all of you guys. My favorite moments were the toughest moments, to be honest. Like, I had one scene where I was tripping out on acid. That scene took me out a little bit. That scene was insane. That was a really fun scene to shoot, but it was just like 20 minutes of just like continuous rolling. And we did that for a couple hours straight, and it was it was rough, but I loved every minute of it because I knew it made me better that day. Yeah, you're so. such a great actor. Something else that I loved is the music, the soundtrack, very 90s. Me, I was gonna say, I'm like, okay, so who are some of your favorite 90s artists? Tupac, Goody Mob, Outkast, you know that whole that whole group, like the song Black Ice, um, Hit 'Em Up, Tupac. You know what I mean? Like that little action, that's my shit right there. So I just wanted to say you did such a fantabulous job. You bought, I think, the realness to who Warren was. And again, though this is someone who committed something, I felt watching you the empathy. And I just wanted to say you did a great job. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. What a story. What a show. What a role.
you, <laughs> I had so many moments where I'm watching it and I'm like, I hate her, but I love her because these are teenagers. And then when you find out the real story, you try to figure out why they did what they did. So for you, what was the emotion like for you when you got this role? and you took this part what was that like for you yeah, I, I was really touched even when i got the audition to you know even do it but um, i was really touched because it's such a it's such a beautiful story and it really it really dives into the characters of why they they did the things that they did and the horrible things that they did and i feel like this shows a really good job at unveiling that yeah after taking on this role is there anything new that you learned about yourself yeah just the just that everything and kindness means everything um just really it really made me take a step back and just reflect on my character and i hope it does the same but yeah did you ever have a moment because you were so badass and unfortunately it is a real story but you did such a great job of conveying the feelings and the emotions where i'm watching it and i'm like oh my god this girl for you did you ever have to have a moment where you had to step back and be like okay i need to take a breather or this is too much talk about that process of kind of like checking in and out of like the character it's definitely important to know you have that character but also have yourself have that mental space where you can take out and you can take a step back because it is such a deep role i feel like that was really important but yeah though this is dark one of my favorite things that i got to watch was the girls coming together and vibing to music and hip-hop and Biggie and Little Kim and DeBrat. For you, did, have you ever listened to anyone from the 90s and do you have a favorite 90s artist? If so, doesn't have to be hip-hop, but anybody from the 90s. You know, honestly, Biggie, me and my dad listened to that. He's the one that introduced me to that, so Biggie. <laughs> I love that, I love yeah. that. Thank you so much and congratulations on everything. Thank you so much, Thank appreciate you. it. So much, you do too. Thank you. I wish I had your skin. Like, oh my God, you, you look great. <laughs> We're just complimenting each other. We're like, you look beautiful, you look gorgeous. Sorry, that's, this that's, is that's, just the that's interview. <laughs> Well, first of all, congratulations. I mean, this project, it's its a lot because it's a real life story and especially the character that you take on. I know that had to be maybe overwhelming for you. So for you, was there any hesitation on taking this role? I mean, in all honesty, I felt like, not necessarily like I had to, but I did have a friend that was going through a similar situation as Rena. So once I had this opportunity to really tell the story, I was like, this is my chance to tell her story. You know, that was that was my view on it. Yeah. Watching you on screen was so magical because not only is this a real life story and you want to tap in and you look into the story, but watching you, you and I think all the characters, you guys do this thing where you guys bring the emotion and the empathy out where you're like, do I like this person? Do I feel for this person? Can I see myself if I'm 16, 15, and 14 going through the same thing? So can you talk a little about, about that, like maybe reading about your character and learning who she is in real life and maybe looking at it and being like, wait, what's going on? Because that's how I felt watching it. Not that I agreed with anything, but because these are young kids and maybe a choice that they made changed their lives forever. Uh, I mean, um, with, with all the the feelings that you feel towards the kids and do I like them, do I not like them, all credit has to go to Quinn and Samir. They are brilliant writers and I'm so happy that I had their guidance throughout this entire show. Something that I, I, this was a little dark, but something that was really light for me and something I loved was watching the girls vibe to music and having that moment together and 90s music. So for you, what was like your favorite moment working on this, um, this piece? Working on this piece, there's so many moments though. Like, I, I can't pick one. Like, there's so many. There's so many good ones. So I'll ask you this. So there was a lot of Biggie, Little Kim, a lot of 90s. Was was there anything new that you learned or any new artists that you learned from working on this? Or was it someone that maybe from the 90s you were always listening to? In all honesty, I like I grew up with a very vast, different music taste. So I love everything and every single thing. So like, <laughs> so to have songs that I knew and I grew up with to be on the show, I was like, oh my god, yeah, like, um, um, I don't know how to pronounce the song, but Alameda, like, it's like, oh, yeah. na, na, na. that was in the scene, and I was like, oh my gosh, it's like, like I, know I know that song. Yeah, like, the music, the soundtrack. It's brilliant. It's, it's brilliant. brilliant. It's brilliant. But you were extremely brilliant. Congratulations. You did such a fabulous job. Again, like as I was watching it, I was watching you and I'm like, I hope I get the chance to speak to her because you did such an amazing job. So thank you so much. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Yes, and congratulations on everything. Thank you. Yes, so you're much. welcome. You look so beautiful. Thank you. You look gorgeous. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. You look gorgeous. Thank you, you as well. Thank you. Congratulations. What a story. What a character, and not just a character, because you're playing someone in real life. So for you, was there any hesitations on taking the role? 
Yeah, I definitely think there was a sense of pressure, of course, you know, taking on someone that was a real person, and I do want to do her justice, but I think it's really important for me mostly just for the audience to take away and have these purposeful conversations amongst themselves and their peers, and, you know, it's very important to not judge someone because you never know what they're going through. You did such a fabulous job with conveying the emotions and humanizing Rena because again there's this thing where there's stories like her story and her voice that goes unheard in a race and a lot of times we don't know these stories and you did such a fabulous job I was so emotional watching this and I'm like wow but yeah it was a lot but especially seeing the family dynamic what was that like on set working together because I felt I felt because I would watch the family interviews as well so seeing you all I was like Woo! So what was that like for you working with the family? I mean, that definitely has to be like my favorite question. Um, we actually had rehearsals before the filming process, so I was really able to kind of feel the family dynamic with, you know, Ezra and Archie and Anoop, who plays my uncle in the show, and I just really got to talk to them and really just get comfortable with them. We were able to just really, you know, have fun together, and I think that's super important when you're working with someone for such a long time. Yeah, you guys did an amazing job. Is there anything that you would love the audience to know about Rena for those who don't know the story yet? Because this comes out on Wednesday and a lot of people don't know her story and I definitely didn't know so is there something you would you would want the audience to know yeah I I think I really want people to understand that you know we should really understand Rena not just as a person but you know as a sister as a friend and as a normal teenage girl who's going through things that we all have been through you know I think we all have our problems and you know we all feel have insecurity so I think that's definitely something I want them to take away yeah. as dark as this was one of my favorite moments was seeing the girls vibe together listen to the music seeing you rap Biggie or a little Kim I was like oh my god this is amazing or Debrat so for you was this you tapping into new music have you always listened to 90s art Artists, and if so, do you have a favorite 90s artist? Ooh, okay, that's a great question. So for me personally, I had no idea about any 90s artist. So really playing into Rena, I wanted to understand the type of music, you know, what she really loved. And it was such a big part of her as well. So I actually made a Rena playlist where I kind of put a bunch of songs that I really thought she would listen to and enjoy. And um, yeah, I think my favorite artist would definitely have to be Biggie. And Ezra, who plays my dad in the show, he actually gave me a Biggie album at the end of our filming which was so sweet. I love that. It was so beautiful and it was just really fun. I love that. Well, congratulations on everything. You did such an amazing job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, so Thank you. Much. Nice to First of all, congratulations on the series and the role and what a role. What what a project because this is not like any other project. This is a real life story. So for you, were there any hesitations for you taking the role? Um no, I was really excited to take the role. I thought it was brilliantly written. I thought Dusty was a great, um, deep character who wasn't um, compromising in her blackness, but had so much depth, and I really appreciate that. Though this story is so insane, I guess you can say, the character of Dusty, you did such an amazing job with the empathy and the feelings where I'm watching this, and. These are kids who did something, but you're watching Dusty and you relate to her story and you do a, such a good job of conveying that on the screen. Can you talk a little bit about that, like what it was like for you to kind of tap into the character of Dusty? Yeah, I think the character of Dusty is very much characterized by regret. I think that's a very human emotion that all of us feel and many of us avoid dealing with because it's, you know, the mistakes that we've made in life. I think that a lot of people can probably relate to Dusty in a way, see themselves in her because we've all made mistakes that we that we regret. Maybe not as big, but um, yeah. I was screaming at the screen. I'm like, I love to hate her. <laughs> but that's 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 the amazingness of your acting. You did such an amazing job. After working on this project, is there anything new that you learned about yourself? Um, I learned to trust myself. That's good. That's mm -hmm. good. Something that I did love out of this that bought me happiness was the music, the soundtrack. Watching the girls vibe to Biggie and Little Kim. What were some of your favorite moments as far as, was this music that you were learning for the first time? Was this something that maybe you've listened to already? Yes. Come on. I love 90s music. Okay. Truly the best. Do you have a favorite 90s artist? Oh, uh, don't do this to me. I'm in, Aaliyah, in an Aaliyah phase right now, so that's what I'm going to go with. She's a good one. Thank you so much and congratulations on everything. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. Lovely, to Lovely to speak to you. Bye. Bye. You look great. And I'm obsessed with the suit. The Thank color. you so much. Thank you. Yes. It's so comfortable too. This, I'm, this I'm happy. I'm yeah. a lover of suits. Congratulations on everything. Um, what a story. It's a real life story and it, it, it's a tough story. So for you, when you tapped into this project, were there any hesitations on taking on this project? 
you know, I think it was one of those things, I read the script and it scared me. And I think that was a good thing. You know, like like reading reading a story that is this propulsive and this intense, there's so much that is kind of like, you put up barriers, right? Where you're like, oh, okay, I'm really gonna have to go there. But it's in that that we can do the most good, right? And I, I, I really hope that this show can do good for people, so. Yeah, I know for me, um, I didn't know the story, and I, I, I'm a big true crime fan, but didn't know the story, and I'm so grateful for this to come out, because uh, someone made a good point, where it's a story like Raina's, where voices like her are unheard, or they're erased, and then you hear the story about what kids were doing in Canada in 97, and you're like, oh my God, th this is this is deep, so for you to check in and out of your, did you have any checks and balances when you're going in and out of the character, and what were they? Um, like, what did I do to kind of, like, relax? Yeah. I think, you know, it was great that we were all kind of the same age yeah, on set. So I great. feel like the vibe was very, um, it was, te we're teenagers on set, yeah. right? So when you call cut, we're like, okay, you're chilling, making jokes. Um, but everyone is so professional, too, that, like, as soon as you're on set, like, as soon as you're in front of the camera, like, bam, like, everyone's ready to go. Um, so I think everyone kind of supported each other and, and lifted each other up in that way. I love that. Yeah. Though this is dark, something that bought me light and something that I really liked was seeing the music, the soundtrack, yeah. vibe into, like, Biggie and uh, it was like Little Kim and DeBrat. So for you, do you have a favorite 90s artist? And if so, or was this a project where you learned something new about 90s artists? I mean, I definitely, I, I've listened to a couple 90s artists. I'm really loving Salt and Pepper right now. Oh, like I, I can- That's a good one. I that. Yeah, okay, yeah, so yeah. That's a good one, mm -hmm. okay, awesome. Well, thank you and congratulations on the project. Thank you, I really appreciate thank it. Congratulations on this. I, I know this must be tough because it's a real story and these are real characters. So for you, were there any hesitations for you taking on this role and taking on this project? I mean, I've never done anything like this before, so I really had no idea what to expect or what, just what to expect. So I think I'm just so grateful to have such a supportive family and friends that, you know, helped me through the whole process. But You did an amazing job, especially with conveying the feelings um, on screen and me seeing the feelings and feeling the feelings and learning about this real story. Though this was a dark story, something that I really loved was the music, the soundtrack, and it's a lot of 90s music. So for you, was this any new music that you were learning or did you have a 90s artist that you already liked? I love that you just asked me this question. Um, you know, nine, since it being a period piece, 90s music was huge in the process and you know, I always had headphones with me on set. I mean, if you see any like behind the scenes pictures, it's always the headphones, always. So, you know, lots of, but like for my character, it was lots of like Spice Girls and Backstreet Boys and NSYNC. So a lot of that, that, that part was new, but I grew up on like Snoop Dogg, Dre, Eminem. I love it, that sounds like my playlist. I'm obsessed. Totally, totally. Yes. Well, thank you so much and congratulations. Thank you so much. It was so nice meeting you. so nice you. to meet you, you look gorgeous. So this is a British designer called uh, Kiko Kostadinov, yeah. you know, who does amazing nets. This all right, is great. all right. It's the jeans for me. Oh, these jeans are actually from <laughs> Japan. There's a story to them. They're actually from Osaka. The Big John jeans. Okay. And I traveled all the way to Osaka to get them. Did you? These are great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're old school. Like I'm, uh, you know, hey, what? I just like a little bit of a homage to Marlon Brando as well. But, ah. <laughs> you did there. <laughs> well, first of all, congratulations. Um, what a story. And for a lot of people who don't know, it is a true story. And this is a true crime story. So for you, when you took on the role, and a very important role at that, was there any hesitation for you taking no this hesitation. on? And tell me why there was no hesitation. There was no hesitation because the moment I received the script, I resonated with that role. I didn't necessarily know about the story, to be, you know, to be very frank. I didn't know fully about the story. That's something that I had to find when I actually read the book, uh, Rebecca book and also Manjeet's book uh, upon Rena but in terms of being a father and in terms of like resonating with what the father has to go through and what his daughter is actually going through I got it straight away there was like zero hesitation I was like bring me more you're like give it to me because once I did the research and I looked into the story and I looked into like her parents and doing the interviews especially her father and the optimism that her father had of just wanting to be there for his daughter even though they had that tough back and forth with each other. Um, talk a little bit about you on set with the young woman who plays Rena and what that chemistry was like for you too. <laughs> Ritika is the one, she's the most talented, 
All right, the most youthfully gorgeous person. And everything. so everything unbelievable. And she's so kind, you know, it's so chill. She'd come off and everything, and she'd be like, hey, how you doing, you know? And we'd jibber jabber, jibber jabber. And then bang, we'd like both of us be on set and like straight in again. You know? she's, she's just an extraordinary human. And like at, at that age? Yeah, she's so young, but so great. You all did such a great job. And I, I think of you all, because I was watching it. You guys do this job where like the feelings and the emotions come through the screen. And especially seeing the family. Family dynamic. Ask because we're going through okay, that. And, and I, I was crying because I was really feeling it. And what I loved about this story is the story being told. And I think Lily said something really good where so many stories, like Raina's story, it goes a race and it goes unheard. And same thing with her family story. So seeing you guys on screen and seeing the family dynamic together, I got a little emotional, especially you as the father. We lived, we lived through that, all those moments. And even as a family, as a screen family, we all went actually to Victoria and played our homage to Raina. That, that was something yeah, else. I'm choking up. Yeah, exactly. And that was beautiful. And there was this one moment, uh, at, like, I'll never forget it. We were walking over with flowers, and this couple that were walking a dog stop, and they just lit, and they just said, they didn't even know us, and they said, she's going to love those. Okay. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> the emotions, you're doing it again. Thank you so much. That, that was beautiful. Thank you. Great, how are you? Doing well. Hi. Yeah. Congratulations, um, and also thank you because there are a lot of stories, like Rena's stories, that go unheard in a race, and we don't know about stories like this. So thank you for being a part of this project and bringing it to light. So for you, why was it important to join this project? Um, there were just so many themes in this story. I think everybody sees something different in it, but to me, I mean, there's this is about breaking cycles of violence. It's about like bullying, it's about parent-child relationships, generational trauma, it just, the list goes on, it, it kind of has so much in it. Um, and I think that's why the ensemble found so many different layers and different aspects of the story to express through their performances. And yeah, I mean, I, I think I showed up with one thing, I think you showed up with another, and you know, everybody kind of sees themselves reflected in the show in some way. I wanna say that you guys did such a fabulous job with conveying the feelings, the empathy, because though this is a real life story, these are kids. And I found myself going, well, damn, would I ever be in a moment like this if I'm ever out, if I'm ever doing something stupid? And that's deep for me, because the first thought in your mind, you're like, oh, this is horrible. I can't believe what they did. But when I was watching, I'm like, oh my God. It's a critical question that we all yeah. need to ask ourselves. Like, it's easy to look at that and say, oh, that's wrong and judge it, but it's actually harder work to look within yourself and wonder, could I be capable of this? Is that darkness actually in me as well? Yeah, yeah. For what are sure. your thoughts as well? Because that, that kind of scared me a little bit because I was like, oh my God, because at the 97, I was 12. So watching this, listening to the music, and though I wasn't hanging out in tough crowds, but I could relate to a little bit of what was going on. And I got a little nervous because I was like, wait a minute, am I empathetic? Do I feel? So was that something that going into the project where you're working and where you're like, we also feel the same oh, way? Yeah. Oh, definitely. It was. I mean, I remember like the first week we were working together, we, we talked about, about empathy so much. And, and Samir said to me, like, if we're really going to do this story right and have any shot at making any change, we have to be empathetic when we don't want, when we least want to be. And I think that this, it, you know, it was a challenge, but it was also a, a really powerful experience because I, I feel, I mean, it's the biggest compliment that somebody could give me that they that they do feel like they're confronting that in themselves. Because for me, you can't really begin to confront violence or the seeds of how something like this happens if you don't empathize with the people and see how one might have ended up in that circumstance to be capable of something like that. Yeah. So you, you guys did a fabulous job. I was I was going through a lot of emotions, and I'm like, I hope I get to talk to them on the carpet because this is a lot. And I, I thank you for it because, again, when you people are so quick to judge, but these are kids, yeah. and you guys are so, so young, so young. And I think you guys did such a, a fabulous job with Rebecca's story and the book and bringing it to life and Raina's story. And I just was like, I, thank you. Oh, that means <laughs> yes. a lot. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, one question I do have for you: something that was a favorite of mine was the music, the soundtrack. Biggie, and something that I found interesting because his album is Life After Death, 
And for me, I was kind of comparing Raina's story because though she's not here anymore, and now her story is now life, and it's life after death. Mm -hmm. Did you guys find any comparisons in that? And was that the reason? I know she was a Biggie fan, but yeah, it was a very deliberate choice to yeah, put that okay. album in there. Yeah. Um, and yes, definitely. I mean, what you know? Unfortunately, we we know so little about her. Yeah. You know, it, she had so few friends that we don't really have many accounts of who she was. Yeah. And so the show is our best attempt to kind of speculate as to what she might have been feeling and try to honor her through that portrayal. Knowing that she was listening to that album the day that she died is one of yeah. the only like tr details we know yeah. for sure about her. Yeah. They gave me the chills when we came and they started playing Biggie and I was like that. I know that hearing the, the music chills. from the show is crazy right now. It's amazing. Well you guys congratulations. Thank you again and I can't wait for the audience to, to find the story, to witness the story and maybe do a deep dive themselves and learn more about Raina and her family. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank I really you. appreciate Thank it. You. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. So nice.